So what are we going to do to get into action? We're going to now work on our marketing and lead generation. Some of the things we're going to be talking about in this topic are what to do with your website, but also how to generate some leads, right? So again, when you're doing your marketing as a small business owner, you really want to focus on, is it generating leads for your business? And if it's not, we need to make some adjustments there. So the first thing we're going to look at is your web design. The basics of web design, you want to keep it simple. You can see there, we want to stick with the AIDA rules of a marketing piece. So on your website, you want to stick with the AIDA rules, which stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. And we want it to be in that order. So on your website, you really want to start with something that generates a, uh, attention or garners attention. So maybe it's a headline or maybe it's a picture. And then after that, you want to have some bullet points and start to generate some interest and desire for your prospects that are now viewing your website for maybe the first time. But last but not least, you want to have a call to action, potentially at the bottom of your web page. And that's where it could say, sign up for this newsletter, or call us now, or sign up for this offer. And that is going to be much more likely to generate a lead for your business versus someone just coming to your page and then leaving. So the second thing we want to look at is, there you can see there the second point uh, is WIIFM, which you're saying, what the heck is that? It stands for what's in it for me. This is what your prospect is looking for. They want to know what do I get from it. So I see a lot of websites that say, we are great. We've been around for 30 years. We're amazing. That's great. But your prospect wants to know what do they get from that? What's the benefit to them? You get expertise. We do it right the first time. You get less hassle. Those are the things they're looking for. Uh, another thing you want to make sure in your web design is that you put all the keywords that you need to get found on Google. So make sure you're putting it not just in the context of your website, but also if you post an image or a video, put those keywords into the description points so that those other aspects of your website are going to be found on your SEO and your Google searches as well. You also want to have linkages to other quality websites. And I emphasize the word quality because what Google wants to know is that your website is relevant. So if you're connected to a website that gets zero traffic and has zero information or a non-quality website, that's not going to help your SEO. But if you're connected to 10 to 12 to 15 to 100 websites that are all quality and have a lot of traffic and pertinent information, that's going to help your SEO. Uh, you also want to use this Google Webmaster tool. It's a free tool. You can apply it to your website, and it will tell you what aspects of your website are lacking SEO uh, um, I guess, ability or capability. So that will help you figure those aspects out as well. And last but not least, you want to try to set up a Google Plus business page. You're trying to get found on Google. Guess what? Google wants you to use their products and services. Google Plus is one of those things. So if you make a Google Plus web page, that will help your SEO, and you'll get found more often. When we look at the AIDA rules of a marketing piece, like I mentioned, for your website, we want to understand that it's not just useful for your website, it's also useful for any marketing or, for example, direct mail outs that you might send. So you can see here in this uh, slide, I'm highlighting Whataburger because I actually do a bunch of YouTube videos when I go out to businesses and see different strategies that they're using that are working very well. So I highlighted Whataburger because they sent me a direct mail piece that you can see me holding up there. And they used the AIDA rules very effectively. So in this marketing uh, mail out that they sent, you can see they garnered interest with their headline, you know, talking about the buffalo chicken, rich, uh, chicken strip sandwich. And then they had some interest and desire generated by showing me this juicy burger, you know, juicy chicken sandwich here that you can see with crispy chicken and dripping sauce and melted cheese. And that's really, you know, I'm getting thirsty, just you know, hungry just thinking about it, actually, as, I, as I'm talking about it now. But last but not least, they had an action, a call to action by saying, this is only available for a limited time. So it's telling me as a prospect, hey, I need to get off my butt and go get this chicken strip sandwich before it's gone. So that's the type of principles we want to incorporate, not just in your website, but in your, uh, your mail outs as well. And those are going to generate leads. So in addition to using the AIDA principles on send outs or, or marketing uh, direct mail pieces, another example of a lead generator could be having coupons that, uh, sorry, having receipts that have coupons on them. So in this video, you can see here, I highlighted Starbucks because they actually have coupons on the bottom of their receipts. And I highlighted that basically how this worked was they gave me a coupon to come in and get a deal on a breakfast sandwich. But the key there was I couldn't use it when I walked in that day. I had to come back to use that coupon. So it's going to, what is that, what's that going to do? It's going to, 
create some interest for me to come back to Starbucks so I can use that coupon and it gave me an end date. It was only good for a certain date. So I have to come back within, let's say two weeks. Well, if I was only planning on coming back to Starbucks next month, well, guess what? I might come back a little bit sooner and that means I'm gonna be buying more things from Starbucks more frequently. So this is an example where this strategy may not work on everybody, but if it works on 10% of your customers, guess what? You get 10% more business. So, so this is another strategy to really generate more leads for your business. Uh, another strategy you can look at that's pretty low cost is strategic partners. So an example here you can see in the video is a partnership between Target and Starbucks. So I, I highlighted here in this video where I walked into a Target and I saw a Starbucks inside of Target. And I'm sure you may have seen this you know, multiple places, but what this is doing is it's combining their marketing effect, their, their marketing um, activities. So if I go look up Target on Google and I walk in and I go buy a product and I see Starbucks there, well, guess what? I might go to Starbucks and buy a coffee. Well, Starbucks is then gonna be benefiting from the foot traffic that Target's marketing has generated. And by the same token, if I go in and I search for Starbucks and I walk in to go buy something from Starbucks, I might see Target's products and buy something from Target. So both of these companies are going to be benefiting from each other's marketing activities and using that type of partnership is now increasing the leads that's being generated for both of their companies. So the question is, how can you and your business develop partnerships to either cross-refer or have maybe some products in another, another uh, company's store. How can you use partnerships to increase the leads in your business? Another strategy we want to look at is referrals. Referrals is, if not free, it's relatively inexpensive. And I use an example here of a company you may have heard of, but you may have heard of before, Uber. I think we all know Uber has been exploding here, especially the last five years. And how have they done that? Well, one of the strategies they use is referrals. And I highlight here a couple snapshots of the app on my phone, which you can see they have free rides available. Well, what is a free ride? It's basically a referral. So you can see in the right here, on the right hand side of the details of they're saying, hey, if you refer someone to us, they get a free ride up to 20 bucks. And I don't know about you, but my first Uber ride was from a referral for a free $20 Uber ride. So these are just, it's just one of the aspects they use, but it's relatively inexpensive and it generates lots of referrals and lots of leads for that business. So again, how can you and your business generate leads with referrals? What referral systems do you have? Are you incentivizing someone to give you a referral? Do they get special pricing if they give you a referral? Do they get special pricing if they are a referral? So these are all the types of things we want to think about that these are all strategies that can generate leads for your business for relatively inexpensive pricing. Uh, so those are just some of the different ways to generate leads and some of the different aspects to look at for when you're looking at your marketing. Uh, if you have any questions on any of this material, whether it's the time management or the marketing and the lead generation, feel free to contact me, send me an email, check out my website, uh, give, me a give me a ring. My information's here. I'd love to talk to you about how these concepts apply specifically to your business. So like I said, if you have any questions, give me a call and I'd love to help out.